Hey guys, welcome back to the Calibrate Tools and DIY channel. As much as we love drilling through our walls when we're doing our DIY projects, if you hit the wrong thing, it could spell disaster. So know what's behind your walls. Let's talk about it. I'll see you right after this. Now, if you think you're hitting something while you're drilling, it could be the simplest, silliest mistake. It can be as simple as having it in reverse instead of forward. If you're looking down the barrel of your drill, forward is clockwise, reverse is anti-clockwise. So make sure that switch is in the proper mode. And if you're using a cordless drill, it could also be the fact that your battery's low and you can tell when the drill is losing power because it starts to slow down and it doesn't penetrate what it should penetrate easily, like wood or drywall. Now there's a caveat to the statement about wood being easy to penetrate because all wood is not created equal. Some are more dense than others, and that could depend on the age of the wood, the chemical composition, and the way it was processed. All of these things can make some wood more harder to penetrate than others. You, as a DIY person, don't necessarily have control over these factors, but you do have control over the drill bits. Are they dull and causing you to experience more resistance as you're drilling? If you suspect that you have a dull drill bit, for example, if you can drill through the drywall, but you're having a hard time penetrating the stud behind it, test another drill bit. And if that one has no problem penetrating the wood, you know the first one was most likely dull. I know we mentioned battery life earlier in reference to cordless drills, but all batteries aren't created equal either. If you opt for a low budget drill, that's fine, but don't expect optimal performance when it comes to power and penetration. You get what you pay for. Just make sure your battery is fully charged. And if it's still having a hard time penetrating after being fully charged, grab a corded drill. Try that, and if this corded drill penetrates easily, then you know that the cordless drill doesn't have enough power. In that case, you might wanna get a new drill or just keep both, because I'm sure this one will still come in handy for what you need to do later. And if the corded drill is having a problem, then there are other issues that you need to tackle. Let's talk about them. Another obstruction that your drill bit may encounter or may run into is metal plates behind your walls. Most likely these metal plates are attached to your studs. They're there to protect any electrical wiring, pipes, or duct work that may be running through your studs or behind your walls or through your framing. They do have different size protector plates. As you see, there's one there. And here's a smaller one back here. Last thing you wanna do is drill through your electrical wiring. That can cause a fire. You can even electrocute yourself. Hopefully you just cause a short and the power goes out. So if you do run into a protector plate or a nail plate, as it's called, move up or down about five or so inches then hopefully you'll miss it and hit the bare stud. Now, just like electrical code requires metal plates to be placed on studs with wires going through them, there's also a little give in the wire to allow them to be flexible, just in case you need to pull them out or adjust them. But that's also a good thing, just in case you hit the wire with your drill bit. That little bit of give and flexibility that the wire has can save it from getting penetrated by the drill bit. The drill bit may even slide over it or push it out of the way. Just remember, if you do hit a nail plate, stop drilling. It's there for a reason. You definitely wanna stop if you hit something like pipe running back there. Last thing you wanna do is puncture a pipe. The amount of water damage that can happen can be astronomical, for lack of a better word. It can rot everything from your drywall to your flooring. Any construction material that it comes in contact with, it can destroy over a period of time. And that's not including the mold that can form. So this is all the more reason to know what's behind your walls. Now it's a lot harder to drill through copper pipes, but if you don't know what you got back there, just don't take the risk. Now in today's homes, PVC pipe is more common, which makes it even worse because it takes literally nothing to puncture or damage these things. And you don't even have to fully penetrate it. You can just create a crack in it. And then over time, that crack will get worse and start leaking and you wouldn't even know it. But you'll be able to tell later when there's a foul smell and you don't know where it's coming from. If you see plastic residue on your drill bit after you pull it out, most likely you've hit a pipe. First thing you should do is go shut off the water and shut off the power to your house as well. Now, most of us don't have x-ray vision, but there are things that are around the home that can tell you, yes, there is electrical wire or a pipe that's running behind the wall. Bathrooms and kitchens. If there's a sink or shower, then 100% guaranteed there's piping running in the walls behind them. If there's a socket, electrical outlet, or a light switch, 
wires definitely come from those and they're usually at the same level in the wall so if you're going to drill near those try drilling above or below the socket or light switch in colder regions usually pipes are located on the interior walls that's to keep them from freezing over so just be aware of that now most studs in a residential home are made of wood but if you live in a high rise they may be made of steel a drill bit will penetrate wood relatively easily and they'll penetrate a steel stud as well depending on the type of drill bit you have studs are what you want to drill into when you're trying to hang something on the wall or fasten something to the wall how do you know if you hit a stud you'll probably see some sawdust on the drill bit when you pull it out, along with some drywall dust as well. And if you're still not sure you hit a stud, they're usually 16 or 24 inches apart. You can also get a stud finder to make sure as well. All right, guys, just a quick disclaimer on stud finders. Are they 100% accurate? Well, stud finders are made to find the location of wood stud framing, and it does that, but it also finds metal, plastic, wiring, and other objects in the wall just as easily. So it can give you a false positive, and the ones with deep scanning modes on them increase the likelihood of that. So let me show you another less techy method that you can use to keep from hitting those pipes and wires. Take your drill bit and take some tape. If you got some painter's tape or something like that, that's even better. I got some foam tape here. And you wanna go about 5 eighths of an inch from the tip. Then you wanna take your tape and place it at that mark, about 5 eighths of an inch from the tip. That's a little over half an inch, which is a little thicker than half inch drywall. Now, because this is foam tape, it's pretty thick, but that's even better. So when you do penetrate your drywall, it's gonna stop at that 5 eighths of an inch mark. And that tells you, stop. No need to go any deeper. Now, sometimes drywalls attach to brick or concrete with narrow strips of wood. They call them furring strips, or sometimes it's metal studs. So if you happen to hit concrete or brick, just slap in a masonry bit, and that should get you through. All right, guys, the main danger of drilling into your wall is either hitting an electrical wire, a gas pipe, or a water pipe. You don't want to be electrocuted, and you don't want to flood in your house. With light switches and sockets, remember the wiring is usually horizontal along the same plane as the switch or socket or vertical. So you pretty much have four quadrants around that light switch or socket to drill through. If you appreciate the content, don't hesitate to hit that like and subscribe button. Go to Calibrate.com to help support the channel. We got some great gift items over there. Don't miss out. See you guys next time.